In the previous tutorial, we introduced a basic Django migration workflow. This basic workflow could be applied to any size or scale of project. However, more often or not, it is never that straightforward. The size, the scale, the collaborative approach to development will always suggest that the Django migration workflow is not just about following basic and straightforward steps, but involves a deeper understanding of the intricacies, subtleties, and specific details that can arise in real world scenarios. In this tutorial, I'd like to explore an enhanced Django migration workflow from a developer perspective. So let's take our previous basic process and see if we can zoom out a little bit and start to add some additional layers. So let's make the assumption that a database exists there has already been a few different migrations uh, performed on the database and now we're ready to perform some additional migrations based upon changes that are needed in the database. Depending on where the application is in its life cycle, changes to the database can happen daily, weekly, monthly, but there's something that I can almost guarantee. There will be changes to your database at some point in time. Of course, generally, we might see more changes within the development process. But once the database goes live, that doesn't necessarily mean that the changes stop at this point. When you consider the fact that there will be user interactions, the business may grow, we may include more features, we may change, there may be changes, sorry, to regulatory compliances. We might think about performance optimizations at that point once the database goes live, the application goes live. We need to think about data migrations, data archiving, purging, login, auditing, and there may be other external factors. It is almost a guarantee that there will be changes to your database. As a Django developer, we may not be part of the planning and documentation phase. Of course, database planning and documentation plays a crucial role in the development and maintenance of any application. The type of business will significantly influence the planning stage of database development. Different types of businesses have unique requirements, data characteristics, and operational needs. In the context of this module, we don't necessarily need to explore this in any detail, but what will be important is that we have a clear understanding of the requirements, a clear understanding of what changes that need to be made. With the documentation of the plan changes, we can now start to think about actually applying these changes to our database. So at the first stage here of this process, I have highlighted the concept of tests. Testing will be crucial at this stage because we want to make sure that before we start making changes, that the system is performing as intended. We don't want to end up making changes and then find an error which isn't necessarily an error related to the changes that we've made. Once we have confirmed that everything is working as intended, that seems like a good place to now start thinking about making the changes. So we can go ahead and make changes. So after confirming our tests, we move to making necessary changes to our Django models. This might involve adding the new features or optimizing the existing ones. So depending upon the changes that we need to make from the documentation created from the planning stage. Now, at this point, we are probably utilizing a test database. We wouldn't be using the live database at this point in this development process. That doesn't seem like a very good idea. So once we've made the changes, we would then potentially go ahead and create a migration. So we could utilize migrations command, optionally with the dry run to preview the changes before committing. It's always a good idea once you've created the migration file to review the file to make sure that it meets the requirements or expectations of the changes. And this step would help to ensure smooth transition. So once that's in place, we can go ahead and then migrate. So we apply the migrations using the migrate command. This can be done for specific apps or all apps, depending on the changes. So at this point, we have now created changes to the database schema. So it will be crucial to verify that the database structure aligns with our expectations. Again, there may be more testing at this point. This will ensure data integrity and consistency. 
So far, we have been discussing migrations in terms of the structure of the database, the structure of the database schema. Now, in addition to that, some changes that we make to the schema will also require us to think about data changes, the actual data within our tables. Now, this is a topic that we would discuss in more detail in the next module. However, when dealing with complex data manipulation during the development and evolution of your database application, it is vital con to consider the use of dedicated data migrations. It is possible for us to consider the data migration changes within the initial schema migration, but it's always recommended to separate this data migration. So the fact is that data migrations are not just about altering the database schema, they're also about transforming existing data. For intricate scenarios where you need to perform complex data manipulations, separating these tasks into de dedicated data migrations keeps the process organized. In addition to that, this separation makes it easier for developers to understand and manage changes related to data manipulations without mixing them with the schema alterations. Let's think of a scenario, converting date formats. Imagine you're transitioning from one data format to another, such as changing date formats or converting textual data. This operation is better suited for a dedicated data migration, allowing you to encapsulate the logic and keep it separate from structural changes. Additional benefits of separating data and structured migrations is easier rollback. So in case of issues or the need to revert changes, having dedicated data migrations makes it simpler to roll back only the data changes without affecting the database schema. Now, generally speaking, the larger the application, the more complex the application is, my preference is always to break down as much of the migration as possible into smaller components. That way I can make smaller incremental changes and test them as I go along. And then when I feel comfortable, when we get to that point where it's fully tested, I can then start to think about making those changes into a much larger component. So that brings us to the idea of atomic changes, which I would try and describe as best as I can. So. Here we are ensuring that model changes are atomic, which is a good practice in database development. So atomic changes refer to bundling related alterations into a single migration, ensuring consistency and ease of rollback. Consider a scenario where you're introducing a new feature that involves changes to multiple models and their relationships. An atomic change ensures that all related alterations are going to be applied simultaneously. So maybe I can summarize at this point and say, in Django, a migration is a way to propagate changes you make to your models, adding a field, deleting a model, etc. In your database schema, the term atomic here refers to, or means that the set of changes within a single migration file is treated as a single individual unit. Either all the changes in the migration are applied to a database or none of them. Where this potentially becomes more important is when we start to make changes which involves multiple models in two different apps. You would create normally a migration file for each app to encapsulate the changes in a logical and atomic manner within each app. If there are dependencies between the two apps, Django Migration System allows you to handle these dependencies and ensure a consistent application of changes. So a desirable effect that we want to try and create if we are working with two apps which depend on each other, when we roll back one app, we also want to potentially roll back the migration of the other app. So to ensure that we have a consistent rollback approach, should there be any problems with the changes that we make. We don't want to get into a situation where we have app A, which we have migrated so far, and then app B, which is dependent upon app A, which we've also migrated to a certain point, so it supports app A. We don't want to get to a point where we start to roll back app A, and then we're wondering, well, how far do we need to roll back app B? So 
having a way of rolling back both at the same time. So building a connection between these different migrations, we can see that that is going to be a much structured way, much more structured way of rolling back and making changes within our migrations. Now, if this doesn't make sense, don't worry, we will be performing or undertaking an exercise which will highlight this point later on in this module. Okay, so in addition to all of that, some other considerations in this process is custom operations. So in scenarios where standard migrations are insufficient, Django does provide the flexibility to leverage custom operations, enhancing the power and adaptability of the migration system. So custom operations become valuable when your migration needs go beyond the capabilities of standard operations. This could involve executing complex SQL queries, integrating with external systems, or performing specialized data transformations. The great feature of Django migration system is that it is highly extensible. Leveraging custom operations allows us to tailor our migration process to meet our specific requirements of our application. So we have now gone from the basic process of defining models, creating migrations, applying migrations, and checking the database structure, to a more enhanced view of the process, which includes running tests, thinking about separating data migrations, atomic changes, and custom operations. This gives us a deeper view of the skill sets and processes that we need to consider when creating migrations. So now we're going to be working through a range of exercise, which is going to help us explore the migration process and complement the information that we have presented here.